All right, today we're talking about graphing rational functions. So what makes a rational function? That's any time we have a variable in the denominator. Um, specifically, when we have some sort of polynomial in the top and bottom, uh, but we need to specifically have at least one variable in the denominator. Okay, so in this case, the parent function, the most basic one we can graph is just one over x. And that is graphed over here at the right. And you can see this is a very strange looking graph. Um, the blue kind of curvy parts are the parts of the actual graph here. And these dashed lines uh, that are kind of highlighted there are something called asymptotes. So this general shape is called a hyperbola. So you've heard of a parabola. This is called a hyperbola. Uh, and hyperbolas always kind of have these little shapes that will get closer and closer to um, some lines in this case called asymptotes. So what is an asymptote? It's a line or shape of a graph, uh, or line or shape, a graph infinitely approaches. So it gets closer and closer and closer and closer, but it never actually touches or crosses. So it's like a forbidden value. We can get really, really close, but we can't actually touch it or leap over to the other side. Okay, so we have to draw this graph in multiple parts. Uh, so the domain of this graph, the possible x values, think about I can plug in any number I want here for x. We could plug in 1, right? We'd get 1 over 1, which is 1. 1 over 2 is 1 half. 1 over 3 is 1 third. We'd get answers back for all of these. I could plug in negative 2. And we'd get negative 1 half, etc. The one value I can't plug in, though, is 0. We can't divide by zero, can't have zero in the denominator. This is forbidden, right? So in this case, we need to exclude x from our domain. So this is a very simple way of stating that our domain could be any number except zero. x cannot equal zero. Uh, likewise, you can actually see uh, a horizontal line that our graph is approaching as well. And I'm sorry, I should say that this forbidden value is x equals 0. It's where this vertical dashed line is. And it's even notated down below here. So this is our vertical asymptote, which I'll just abbreviate. Uh, we can also see that there is a horizontal asymptote. And so we do have a forbidden range value as well, which is y equals 0. And you can see that notated over here. That one's a little more complex to find, uh, but we will definitely talk about that. Okay, here are the steps for graphing this by hand. The first thing we want to do is factor the top and bottom, these polynomials that we have in the top and bottom, as completely as possible. So if we were to look at, say, uh, the example I used in the step here, if we have quadratics, we try to factor them. Or if there's a greatest common factor, we would take it out. Okay, so factor completely, if possible. Step two, find the value or values that make each factor in the denominator, that's the bottom of the fraction, equal zero. Exclude those values from the domain. Remember, we can't have zero in the denominator. So any value of x that makes the denominator zero, we have to say x cannot equal those. That's how we find the domain. Okay, well obviously we'll do some examples of this. Mark excluded values on the graph as vertical asymptotes. So we're going to go to those x values and draw in those vertical line or lines if there happen to be more than one. Okay, step three is that we need to, to find the horizontal asymptote, which I said is a little more complex. We have to compare the degree of the top and bottom polynomials. So the polynomial on the top of our fraction and the bottom we want to compare the degree. And remember, the degree is the highest exponent on our value of x. Okay, so in this specific example I provided to the right here, if the degree of the top and bottom are the same, these are both degree 2, we use the ratio of the leading coefficients. So the numbers in front of our biggest power of x. So 3 over 4. My horizontal asymptote the one that goes left to right on my graph, would be at y equals 3 fourths. So at 0.75 is where we would find that horizontal asymptote. Okay, so if the degrees are equal, 
we use the ratio or kind of that fraction of the numbers in front of the highest powers of x in the top and bottom. Okay, however, if the degree of the bottom is bigger than the top, so say this was x cubed and the bottom was x squared, so the degree of the bottom is bigger, okay, it defaults to y equals zero like our parent function. However, sometimes they're gonna do something like this And they're going to put kind of like a plus k, right? Where k is something we've added after our polynomials. If they do that, this would give me a horizontal asymptote of a zero. It would default to zero, the part here. But this two shifts my entire graph up two. So we'd have to move that horizontal asymptote as well. So in this case, it would be zero plus two or y equals two. So if they do put like a plus or minus after your fraction, we need to move the horizontal asymptote up or down by that value. Uh, if the top is the bigger one, so if the bottom degree is less than the top, so if it's top heavy, you'd have to use polynomial long division. Um, for for non-honors algebra, we won't make you do those ones by hand. Okay, But you do get something that's a non-horizontal asymptote. You might actually have like, it's called a slant asymptote that your graph curves towards but we won't have to do those by hand. Four, now that we have these asymptotes, we want to pick points as close to the intersections of the vertical and horizontal asymptotes to figure out how close we come into those curves. So if we look back at the curves of this graph, does it come in on my new graph, does it come in even tighter into this curve, or does it come in really loosely out here into this curve before curving towards my asymptotes? So that's why we want to pick points as close as we can to the intersection. Um, and then we sketch our graph as we get closer and closer to those asymptotes we've sketched in. And step five, of course, is just type it all into Desmos and uh, put parentheses around the top and bottom and check your graph, right? Okay, let's try our first example here. And yes, we will go to like Desmos and, and check it in the end. So it says identify the vertical asymptote or asymptotes, horizontal asymptote, and the domain of each. Then sketch the graph. So let's start with the vertical asymptote. Now if we go back to our steps for a second, remember step one is to factor the top and bottom completely. Now there's nothing I can factor out of the top, and there's nothing I can factor out of the bottom. Okay, so we can kind of skip step one. There's nothing to factor. Step two is find all values that make the denominator equal zero. So what we're gonna do is actually take the denominator, x minus two, we're gonna take that thing off to the side here. What makes x minus two equal zero? Well, if I put two over there, we get x equals two. When x is two, the denominator becomes zero, and that makes sense. Imagine plugging two in there. Two minus two would be zero. Four divided by zero is undefined. Okay, so we get that my vertical asymptote occurs at, I'll use my little ampersand there, at x equals two. So we can actually sketch that in our graph. I'm gonna use a, kind of a green here. When x is positive two, I'll even label that x equals 2. Okay, there's my vertical asymptote. Now that's also a value to exclude from the domain, and it did ask us to find the domain. So for my domain, we could say x could be any real number except for 2. Uh, and a more precise way of writing that is you could say all reals such that x does not equal 2. Okay, so any other number would be fine. Okay, now let's find our horizontal asymptote. To find the horizontal asymptote, compare the degrees of the top and the bottom. Okay, so let's do that. So up top, notice that there is no value of x, which means it is a 0 degree. So the degree of the top is 0. But in the bottom, we do have x to the first, so this is a first degree. 
So in this case, if we compare the degrees at the top and the bottom, we can see the bottom has the bigger degree. So let's check our kind of chart here. The bottom degree is bigger than the top. It defaults to y equals zero. But remember, if they put a plus k afterwards, we have to put that in our graph as well. We have to adjust our asymptote. So in this case, we start off with y equals zero. This is for the horizontal asymptote at y equals zero. But then we have this plus three. This is my k value. So we've got to tack on that plus three. And we really get our horizontal asymptote at y equals three. So at positive three. So I'm going to go back to green my asymptote drawn a dashed line at y equals positive three. Our horizontal asymptote goes left to right. I'll label that y equals three. There's my horizontal asymptote. Okay, next we'd want to pick some points close to our intersection. So let's do that. Uh, notice here's my intersection, right, of these two asymptotes. So I want to pick some x values that are close to it, maybe three and four maybe one and zero. Those would be four good points to pick pretty close to where those intersect. So we'll make ourselves a little t-chart. Now I know when I plug in an x value of two, it's undefined, but I wanna plug in one and zero, three and four, and find some nice values. Again, we're picking x values, so x values that are close to that intersection. So we're gonna to go to our function and actually plug in some of these values. Let's plug in zero. So zero minus two plus three. Well, zero minus two is negative two. Four divided by negative two is negative two. Negative two plus three is one. We end up getting a pretty nice answer. Zero, one, okay, is on my graph. And then I can plug in one. So I can go back and plug in the point of one. Oops. Okay, so now I've plugged in one. One minus two is negative one. Four divided by negative one is negative four, plus three is negative one. So now we're down at negative one here. Then we can do the same and repeat for plugging in with three and four. Okay, so when I plug in three, three minus two is one, four divided by one is four, four plus three gives us seven. So when x is three, y is seven, we're up here. And then we've got one last one to plug in, which is four. Okay, so plugging in four minus two gives us two, four divided by two is two, and two plus three is five. So at four, we go right four, up five, and you'll kind of see these points. If you kind of use this as a center and you did a 180 degree rotational symmetry, you kind of see those points would go on top of each other. So you should usually see that in your graph for most of these simpler functions. So now I know kind of how close this comes into my asymptotes. And I know I'm gonna to need to curve gradually away from these asymptotes or towards them, but getting closer and closer to where they'll never actually touch my graph. So my graph should do something like that, kind of curve away from these asymptotes. Should be getting closer and closer to that. Be smoothly curving through these points and doing something like that. Okay, so here I went ahead and typed in my function into Desmos, four over x minus two plus three. I've also graphed y equals three Right, where our horizontal asymptote is. You can see that by the blue line here. And then x equals two. The green line is my vertical asymptote. And if we check this with our graph, it does look like it's curving away from those two asymptotes. And if I move this so we can get a little bit better picture, we can see we did a pretty good job. Here we are, the intersection of our asymptotes at two, three, two, three. We can see it nicely curving away up in these two corners. Okay, let's try another example. Identify the vertical asymptote or asymptotes, horizontal and domain of each, then sketch the graph. Okay, so remember again, step one was to factor completely, but unfortunately there's nothing to factor from the top and bottom. So that would have been step one. Step two 
So find the excluded value that makes the denominator zero. Find all values that make the denominator zero. So in the denominator, we only have one factor. And again, we're gonna take this off to the side. What makes x minus one equal zero? Adding one to the other side, we get when x equals one. So that is where we have our vertical asymptote at x equals positive one. So we go to positive one, we draw on our dashed vertical line. And the reason this is dashed is it's not technically part of my graph. Remember, it's like this invisible line that my graph is gonna get closer and closer to, but never actually touch. Okay, there's my vertical asymptote. We can also use that to define the domain. Remember the domain here would be all real numbers. So all reals, as long as X does not equal one, right? That's our forbidden value. If we plugged in one here, one minus one would be zero and dividing by zero is undefined. Okay, next to find the horizontal asymptote, we need to look at the degree of the top and bottom. So let's do that. Here, the degree of the top, this is x to the first, so this is a first degree. And then we can look at the bottom, which is also a first degree. Okay. Now, when they are the same, they have the same degree here. If they are equal, we use the ratio of the numbers in front of those powers of x called their leading coefficients. So you can see them boxed in here like three over four, or y equals three fourths. So if we look at our example here, now this part could be a little confusing. There is a negative sign out in front of our fraction. And when we go to do that ratio of leading coefficients, we need to put that negative sign with either the two in the top or the one in the bottom. And there's the number up top here is a two and a one. So two over one, but it is negative. So we need to put that negative sign with one of the numbers, it doesn't really matter which, but my horizontal asymptote is at y equals negative two over one. So I just put it with the number in the top, or y equals negative two. Okay, so at negative two, way down here, y equals negative two, is where my horizontal asymptote is. And notice this time there is no k, you can think of our k value as zero, so that plus or minus k won't apply this time. Horizontal asymptote, y equals negative two. And of course, we'll confirm this with Desmos in a little bit. So next up, we need to find points that are close to the intersection of our asymptotes. So we wanna pick some x values around them, like two and three, zero and negative one. So I even like to put the vertical asymptote, which in this case was one, as undefined. And that just helps me remember to pick points around it, like two and three, zero and negative one. Okay, now we do need to plug those in if we're graphing this by hand to find all those points. Alternatively, you could use Desmos to and type in these x values to find their nice y values. Uh, but I'll go ahead and calculate them out here. So y equals the opposite of two times negative one plus one over negative one minus one. Whew, lots of stuff to simplify here. So up top, uh, I'm just gonna leave that negative sign in front of our fraction to the end here. Two times negative one is negative two plus one. The bottom negative one and negative one makes negative two. Simplifying the top, negative two plus one is negative one. Well, a negative divided by a negative is positive, but I still have that negative out in front of the fraction. So lots of stuff to simplify there, but I believe we get negative one half. Okay, so when x is negative one, we're at negative one half, we're right here at negative one half. Next, I'm gonna plug in zero. That should be a little bit easier to plug in. So I'm leaving that negative sign again out in front. Still gonna leave that negative until the very end. Two times zero is zero plus one. The bottom simplifies to just negative one. So we get one over negative one, which is negative one, but we still have this negative sign out in the front. Negative, two negatives, right? Or minus a negative becomes plus a positive. So when we plug in zero, we get positive one. So we're up at 
one. Okay, so that automatically already gives me an idea how this graph will come into this kind of corner and abide by those asymptotes. And then we're hoping that we find kind of some kind of symmetric points probably down here. So we're gonna plug in two and three, calculate those out. Okay, so I went ahead and plugged in two. We end up getting four plus one up top, two minus one, which is one. So we get five over one, but remember that negative sign in front of our fraction gives us negative five. So at two, we're down at negative five. And that does look kind of symmetric to this point, right? If we use the intersection, we did some rotational symmetry. So it passes my check there. Let's plug in three. All right, so when I plugged in three, we get six plus one or seven in the top, three minus one, which is two in the bottom. Applying our negative sign, half of seven is 3.5. So we're at negative 3.5. So three, we're at negative one, two, three and a half, right about there. And that does kind of match up with that symmetric half point we had earlier. Whoops, sorry, this guy. So now I know how close it comes to these corners. I can kind of show it curving and getting closer and closer to these asymptotes we drew in, never actually touching or, or crossing them. I'll just try to make it smooth as possible. That comes in relatively close to these two. So there we go, there's my graph. We've got our domain, we've got our asymptotes labeled. Let's check it with Desmos. All right, so here's Desmos. Uh, again, be careful, I did make sure I put that negative sign in front of the fraction, not with just the top or bottom, unless you have parentheses around it, like I do here. Um, I put in my asymptote, my horizontal one, y equals negative two, it looks like it matches the graph correctly there, and x equals one. So if I move this out of the way, we can get a little bit better picture of that graph. Uh, I think we did pretty well, looking at where they intersect, one, negative two, one, negative two, yeah coming in in these corners. I mean, it looks pretty good for a hand sketch graph. Okay, this one's a little more extreme, but we'd go through the same process. And the first thing was to factor the top and bottom if possible. Well, x squared, not a lot of factoring we could do. I mean, you could, I guess, write that as x times x if you wanted to, but I think we can just leave it as x squared. The bottom, however, is a quadratic, and I believe it is x factorable. Right, the two numbers that multiply to negative 8, if we're doing an x factor, so we need to multiply to negative 8, we need to add up to negative 2, and those two values would be negative 4 and positive 2. So this factors as x minus 4 times x plus 2. Okay, now remember, for our vertical asymptote, it's any value or values that make factors in the denominator zero. So what makes each of these zero? Well, if we pulled them off to the side, when this x minus four equals zero, when x equals positive four. What makes x plus two equals zero? When x equals negative two, right? Subtract two and add four to each side. So we actually have two vertical asymptotes. So our vertical asymptotes are at x equals 4 and x equals negative 2. So this is going to look pretty funky. And this would require us to plug in a lot of points manually. So I am going to go to Desmos to help us find these points rather than painstakingly calculate them, okay, which I probably would not make you do by hand. Uh, especially when we have access to calculators. Okay, so those we have two vertical asymptotes. So that's going to give us a weird look to our graph. That also means we have two values to exclude from the domain. It is still all real numbers, except x cannot equal, and then we can just list them, 4 and negative 2. Okay, so it could be any other number. Now the horizontal asymptote, remember we looked at the degree of the top and bottom. So I always go back to the original here, the unfactored one. And the degree of the top is a second degree. The degree of the bottom is also a second degree. And when they matched, we looked at the fractions in front of them. So in this case, kind of one over one. So my horizontal asymptote is y equals one over one. Now there is no k out here again, right? There's no value that's being added after the fraction. So we can think of k as zero, 
Uh, so we don't need to include it here. It's just y equals 1. So we go to where y is positive 1. We draw in our horizontal asymptote. Now it should be said that if you have multiple vertical asymptotes, sometimes your graph can cross the horizontal asymptote, but only in the middle, not in the ends. So we may see something weird happen in the middle here. Sometimes you get a, kind of an S shape that comes through one way or the other. Sometimes we might get something like a U that just turns around in either of these cases. Um, you can get some pretty funky looking things with this. Okay, so rather than calculating all these points, now I would need to pick some points near this intersection and the, near this intersection, which is a lot of points to calculate by hand. I'm gonna go ahead and let a table from Desmos save me a little bit of time here. All right, so here's a table from Desmos and I just manually typed in after I converted to table the values that I wanted. And you can see some of them are relatively nice, right? Like negative four is at positive one. All right, so this one does something a little crazy. So you can actually tell at the point negative four, our graph is actually touching where we normally have that horizontal asymptote. So what I just told you, I guess, is technically not always true. So it can pass the horizontal asymptote. The horizontal asymptote is really what's happening at, at positive infinity as we go to the right forever. And at negative infinity, that value that it approaches. So here, even though it's actually crossing at y equals one, this is y equals one here, it actually does start to curve back towards y equals one at infinity. So a little strange on the left-hand side, it's actually crossing over the horizontal one. Okay, it will never cross the vertical asymptotes. But the horizontal one is really just what happens as we go left and right forever, the value that it infinitely approaches. Um, so we do get a really funky looking graph here. You don't have to put in all of these points. As you can tell, I typed in a lot of points. We can just give a rough sketch of what we see, um, which looks something like this weird graph here. So we'll do our best to sketch that in. Okay, so these are all roughly the points I got from my table uh, graphed on here. Now I'm gonna attempt to draw in our smooth curves. Okay, so it should look roughly something like that. Very strange. Um, I guess it was maybe just an unlucky example to pick as our third one. Um, typically we get more symmetry in some of these, but uh, not always. So just remember the vertical asymptote is values that are undefined. Our graph will never equal those, but they can get infinitely close to. And the horizontal asymptotes is just the value that our graph gets closer and closer to as we go towards negative infinity, like to the left on my graph, or towards positive infinity on the right. Okay, that does it for our video. We'll do more examples in class. We might include some of these that look like this with a k value at the end. Um, that's it. Thanks for listening.